Take it all the way into the end zone by himself. So uh, excellent offensive call there by uh, Steve Oysterbrew and uh, Coach Hadicek. As uh, Aaron Dominowski now has come in to do the kicking duties. Him and freshman uh, McNamara. Tom McNamara. Tom they, McNamara switching off the kicking duties. We have an update on the Iowa State Oklahoma State score and over the Big 12 Conference, and that's games being played over in Stillwater. And Iowa State is up 17 to nothing in that one. So both of the Iowa State schools are doing real well today. That kickoff is taken by one of the upbacks for Warburg. So they're going to have decent field goal position on this drive. The next football broadcast by IV Sports will be Saturday, November 2nd. The Beavers will be hosting conference rival Loris. Live remote coverage from Jay Leslie Brown Stadium starts with the pregame show at 1.20. Kickoffs slated for 1.30. Stay tuned to Innovation Video all year long for live coverage of Buena Vista sporting events. That time Trevor Shannon breaks, breaks it off to the left side and looks like he got enough for the first down. Trevor Shannon's been contained pretty much throughout the, this game so far. Yeah, Trevor, first time. Trevor Shane has really uh, been doing a heck of a job running the ball so far today. Hasn't broken in many big ones like uh, had a check had thought maybe he might. So congratulations to the Buena Vista defense there for that containment. Oh, nice hit by Mark Sievers that time. He really came up and stepped into the wide receiver. It's a game of six, so it'll bring up second down and four. And you get a feeling this game's just gonna go right down to the wire. I don't think, I think it's gonna come down to who's ever got the ball last. Shannon is split here to the near side. And a two-man backfield handoff goes to Trevor Shannon. And nice job, good blocking, breaking tackles by Trevor. That's another first down for Warburg. Warburg has, has been moving the ball. They've, they've actually outgained Buena Vista by a considerable amount of yardage here. But the key is when they get down to the red zone, BB's been able to stop them or come up with a big turnover. Or And Warburg's been hurting themselves too as well, Eric, with penalties. Yeah, a lot of penalties Warburg's uh, racked up. Uh, about six total, eight I think. So, uh, and that that big personal foul, that was a big uh, play for Buena Vista. Was able, they were, we were able to get the blocked punt after that penalty and uh, take it in ourselves for a touchdown. So that's where we're standing, you know, 13-9 right now. So the ball is on the 41 of BV. And you got Derek Hartle to the near side and Shannon to the far side. Second down and seven. Nelson hands off to his tailback, Trevor Shannon. Trevor's got the first down and more. Scampers all the way down to the 26. Trevor Shane right there did a real nice job of eluding tacklers. Uh, Matt Sauer had, had Brian uh, Nelson wrapped up and he was able to get out of that and just toss the ball off to Shannon who uh, Right there, you can see it. And then Shannon just able to uh, zigzag his way through the maze of uh, Beaver defenders there and pick up the big first down and a couple more yards after that. First down again for Warper. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. And oh, right there, Steve Maxey. Does a nice job of Scott and Steve Maxey getting in there, getting in the hole, uh, slowing up Trevor. Trevor Shannon from really going anywhere. Again, BB said they would gamble more with the blitz uh, this game. And 
so far, I don't think it's hurt him a whole lot. Which is, again, Coach Hatchek's whole strategy is to be aggressive. He doesn't want to sit back and let the offense, he doesn't want to react to the offense. He wants to create, create aggression on the defense. So it's second down and 10 after that nice stop by Steve Maxey. Here comes the blitz, like you were just talking about. Throws a deep bit for Hartle. And Ryan Schmidt, interception! Is it, did he get his feet in bounds? Yes, he did. BB's ball, Scott. Hit on the one yard line. That's hey, we'll take it. That was Brian Schmidt with the big interception. Let's see the replay here if we can. Well, nice job. Nice job reading the quarterback's eyes and knowing exactly where they're going. Brian Schmidt was right, right on here. It. You see the ball locked in the air going for Cardle there. Brian Schmidt was just able to play it like a just, like a center fielder and uh, picked it right off. You can't cover that play much better than Schmidt did that time. Oh, nice job, Brian Schmidt. So BB's gonna have a have it at the one yard line and see if they can get it out of here. Hissler just Dangerous goes. play there. Maybe try to keep it on the ground until you can get a little bit of breathing room. Chad Hissler almost got tackled in the end zone. Don't want that. Don't want the safety. That's the second interception of the game. And even though Nelson is a, the number one rated offensive uh, player in the Iowa Conference, he is prone to interceptions. See, I looked at his interception ratio, and he's, he throws an interception about once every 12 passes, which is a pretty high amount, the highest amount in the Iowa Conference. Think of this. Whoa, that time. Look at this. I tell you what. I'll give him credit. He's not afraid to throw that ball right in there. Yeah. That was double coverage, and <laughs> I didn't really think his intended receiver was um, Todd Tryon out there. And uh, just, Klingefist just winged that ball right in there. But you gotta like a confidence of a quarterback to do that, even though it's maybe not the best time when you're backed up inside your own end zone. But Yeah, that was a dangerous pass, Scott. Uh, Klingefist, it almost got picked off. This is the area of the field you don't want that type right. of pass to happen either. If that pass was uh, picked off, that's six points yep. for it. And we're down on uh, our own two yard line here. Third down. Maybe right now BB's just gonna need some yards so they can get Holgriff off enough room for a punt. I think I think Scott you'd be right on that. Uh, that would have to be a pretty good assessment of the situation. Get Pat out of at least standing on his yard line, not this is the second home game in a row that we've seen two punts blocked. <laughs> hey, thank you for that little sign. I might have to uh, throw that in the old show tomorrow. Thanks to the super fans there. Oh, big hole! Tony Lovejoy gets the first down. Runs right at the middle and gets to the 19-yard line. That was a big first down for BB. Now they've got the running room that they need to operate with. Yeah, exactly right, Scott. A little, a little draw play to the fullback, Lovejoy. Oh, you can't. That, Runs right up the middle. Good, good job by the offensive line to open up the big hole there. You see it. Big hole opened up, and then uh, Lovejoy kind of does it himself, runs over a couple players, gets some extra yardage. Tony Lovejoy is so big in the upper body that he's just able to break tackles and stiff arm people and pick up that extra few yards he needs. And the handoff goes to Hissler, not much doing Warburg defense. They, they think they recovered they the ball. They say the fumble, but. I didn't I'd have to say, I'd say, I have to say, Chad Hissler was down. I didn't and that's see the, the That's the indication of the refs. They're saying it's second down. Second down and 10, four minutes and 30 seconds to go here. They're in the going third. with a three wide receiver set there. Lovejoy carrying it though, Scott. Tony Lovejoy's been getting quite a few carries today for the Beavers. He's got he's got eight carries, which is uh, 
more than we've seen so far this year. We're gonna go to Brent Johnson right now. So we'll see where Brent's at. The feelings that we're getting from the sidelines and from the stands that the momentum of the game is starting to change into the Beavers' favor. Um, this is a good time for BB. Back to Eric and Scott. Thanks a lot, Brent. And I think we can sense that up here as well. The, the crowd kind of knows we got a real good shot to win this thing. There's Clink with us back with a, with a drop. And oh, that, that's not what we wanted there. It looks like the ball might have slipped out of his hands. Yeah, it looked like maybe a little misdirection. They weren't sure. It seemed Ryan Grubb was to the outside. No one was in the inside there. So maybe they, uh, I think, a little miss misread on the where that ball was actually supposed to be passed here on the replay we can see it click first drops back is there you see Ryan Grubb falling out there and then well I guess he's going for Craig Williams, Craig Williams yeah that was quadruple coverage though around Craig Williams I'm not sure if that's really why he wanted to go with that ball it was Scott. Right into that zone but that time he didn't have the zip on it the pass he normally did did so good opportunity for Warburg here Nick Grant Brian Schmidt coming up from his safety position. Scott to uh, take care of Trevor uh, Shannon that in that play. Brian Schmidt coming to life here in the third quarter with a big interception a few moments ago and then that. That was a big uh, about six yard loss, seven yard loss there, six yards. He's gonna bring up second and 16. Probably a passing down here for Warburg, you'd have to think. Well, they got Hartle here on the near side and Shannon split to the far side. This is where BV's defense, oh yeah, by Matt Sauer. Matt Sauer getting that big <laughs> paw up there and says, get that out of here. Yep. We're not having any of this. Looked like a, a basketball player there be playing the center position, just jumped up and uh, blocked that one. And I think uh, the guy guarding him, number 73, and uh, Sauer, they had a little, couple words there, uh, 73. Didn't take too kindly to Matt knocking that block pass down, but oh well. Is there you see it. Matt with the big vertical just gets up in the air, puts that one down. It's third down, Scott. Well, and, uh, the crowd really appreciates this. We got the fans again on their feet, urging the Beavers to shut down Wilbur here in this third and 16. Yeah, four of three run here for the Beavers. And the pass is gonna be incomplete. That time on Shannon. The cover man is Ryan Rowe. That's going to bring on the Warburg punt unit. It's a nice job by BV to get the punt to, to happen here, Scott. And right now, I'm wondering, uh, Eric, what Warburg is thinking right now. Since 1988, Buena Vista has not come within. The average score has been like 30 to 10 in favor of Warburg since 88. So they've got to be a little bit stunned. I think right now, what's happening? That time, the short kickoff gets a nice roll. You can see that wind is really affecting the kick. Yep. Yeah, that ball kicked right into the wind and it just died. Didn't even get close to Craig Williams. Okay, here's the situation 2.45 left to go in the third quarter. We're up 13 to 9. We have two minutes and 45 seconds in which to work with the wind here. If I'm Coach Hadshek, I'm putting the ball in the air early and often here until the third quarter ends so we can put another touchdown on the board because I tell you what, I wouldn't feel comfortable with a four-point lead with Warburg having the ball and the wind with to their favor in the fourth quarter. So we'll see if BB doesn't try to get quick six on the board here. Oh, a little blowing play there, and Klinkifus goes down hard. That's the second, only the second sack of the game, though, that BB has given up. Looked like there was a mis mismatch yep. assignment. Klinkifus went to hand it off, and there was nobody there. And he was kind of out, he was out there in a no man's land. You have to want. Okay, so we have Pellet here to the near side, and Williams out to the far side. He's the two standing tight ends as we've seen BB do all year. Quinkafus has got nowhere to go with it. That's kind of another broken play. That's going to bring up third and long. Not sure what these last two plays really were for BV. Uh, kind of all broken looking plays. 
See if BB can get something here on the third down. It's going to have to probably be something big. I'm sure uh, Warburg's looking for a pass. So we got Williams and Tryon. And here's a handoff right at the middle to Lovejoy. And Warburg was, oh yeah, Warburg was all over. They smelled that one out from the get-go. Uh, Lovejoy was a dead duck right when he got touched the ball. So BV's going to have to punt it away. Well, Pat Holdreth should be able to get off a pretty good punt with the wind to his back. Sure, uh, looks like Warburg might be sending the whole house. Now they back off a little. That's yeah. a big punt. Boom. Wow. Big, nice punt by Pat Hograve. That's a four second hang time on that one. And BV sells him down. So now the BV defense, Scott, has to come in and uh, once again make a big stop. It's 39 seconds left in the third quarter. BV wants that lead going in the fourth quarter where they can try to hold him up. That's right. I, I think it was, I mentioned, I thought that was pretty important that BV maybe get a drive going because you got to have the lead going into the fourth quarter with Warburg's got the wind to their backs. That's going to be the key to this game, I think. Right now it looks like it's going to be a rollout. And, oh, can't quite bring him down. But <laughs> Nate Barron there had a better chance of catching that ball than any Warburg guy. Number 59, he's injured, sitting out, standing on the sidelines there. I think, was that pressure? Was that Mike Petticord over Mike there? Mike Petticord, yep, yep 92. The, the freshman defensive end, he's been getting a lot of playing time and playing pretty well from what I hear. And even though he didn't bring down uh, There's a nice Nelson. shot. A coach had to check in there. Excuse me, Scott. Yeah, even though Mac, uh, Petticord wasn't able to bring down Nelson, it was just as effective as he caused him to throw the ball away. Sure, the Buena Vista offense, the shot we had just seen, uh, they're planning their next attack, planning what they have to do. There's Pardo's got his man beat. This could be. He's going to go all the way. Nelson to Derek Hartle, and they hook up on about a 60-yard pass play. Mark Seavers never saw that ball coming. His head was turned the totally wrong direction there. So the second... Wide receiver for Warburg. There you go. Is starting you see to it. And he had him beat by a couple steps that yep. time. Mark Seavers didn't see it until it was too late, and the that, ball's already over his head. And if he doesn't make that tackle, it's an automatic six. And that time, Warburg is able to score with, without the win. Let's see about this extra point here. This could be interesting as well. And no good no. once again. No good, that's the second one that they've missed. Place kicker is Aaron Koppel and he's missed two. But uh, Warper gets, goes back ahead, 15 to 13. We mentioned the, the pass defense, Coach Hadchuk was concerned about it. There's, There's the other replay again, Scott. You can nice. see Mark Seavers got beat about two Nelson, steps. Brian Nelson put that pass right where it had to be. That was an excellent thrown pass for Warburg. As the wind's really starting to pick up here, starting to get a little chilly. But the fans aren't going anywhere. They're going to watch this this one to the end. You can bet that. Can't ask much more for a homecoming game, Scott, except this 15-13 uh, game, uh, 23 seconds left in the third quarter. This one will go right down the wire. Iowa Conference football, it just doesn't get any better than this. Back deep for BV is going to be, I believe, the two freshmen, Jeff Brennan and Zach Mathers, to return this kickoff. I think they had to hold the ball on the tee there because the wind's going to blow it off. 
See, this should be a pretty short kick because the wind's going to come into play here on this kick. And it is. Nice low driving kick. But Brennan takes it. And. Jeez. Whoa, it takes a spill on A little the extracurricular activity there. That he, uh, 59, really forced him out of bounds. Brennan went all the way over the bench onto the track. No flag there for that one. Late hit. I don't know. Maybe not. No, BV offense gets another shot, and uh, let's see what they can do. We got 19 seconds before the end of the quarter. I don't know. Again, I gotta think it's gonna be a pass here. I think you gotta you gotta take advantage of the wind when you have it. So again, Klinkifus in there still fakes a handoff. He's got misfires intended for Craig Williams right down the middle, but. Again, Williams is covered pretty well. He had double coverage again. Whoa, as we're having we, our uh, We got stuff flying all over the place. It's just our crazy up here. Our flying up in our face here. <laughs> Blocking our view. Gale Force winds coming off Storm Lake. And handoff goes to Hissler. Hissler able to get about four yards up the middle. Face mask there, the resting catch on Chad Hissler. They had his head snap back. <laughs> That's the end of the third, Scott. End of the third quarter with Warbrick leading 15 to 13. We've got a full quarter to play and it's gonna be interesting, so stick around. We'll be back in a minute. Why would anybody give someone they don't know a gift? do it because this gift saves lives and the need for it is desperate please give blood there's a life to be saved right now call the american red cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE give your group an identity advertise your organization around storm lake Unify your group or organization with shirts, jackets, or hats from Silkscreen Inc. Silkscreen Inc. has a large variety of different styles and colors to fit your needs. Multicolor prints are made easy. Remember, membership has its privileges, and Silkscreen Inc. will make your membership complete. Silkscreen Inc. in Storm Lake. I have today signed an executive order providing for the establishment of a Peace Corps. For 35 years, Peace Corps volunteers around the world have been helping people to help themselves. And for all they put in, they come back with something even greater, a commitment to service and solving problems right here at home. Peace Corps, for 35 years, changing America and changing the world. Welcome back, live action here at the Buena Vista. And Pat Holgriff's, whoa, look at this. Pat Holgriff is going at it right now with number 20 for Warburg. And this is uh, starting to turn into an ugly game here. Uh, it's been a lot of, I think the refs are letting the players play a little bit too much, not. Yeah, they, not the refs totally missed a pass interference call uh, while we were at break. The two guys were draped all over Kurt Bremer. He had, the ball came at him and his arms were being held down by the Warburg guys. No, uh, no call there. No, we can't have this. That, that was uh, Pat Holgriff going at it with Steve Johnson from Warburg. Okay, here's Nelson faking a handoff. He's got his man open, but misses him completely on that pass. The wind is causing havoc with us up in the booth. Blowing our papers all over. 
Can't control it. We need weights. <laughs> we need something. Get us something over here, control room. We need something. Okay, 14.41 to go in this game. You got a feeling there's going to be a lot of more big plays to come. And Nelson's overthrows Derek Cardle. Excellent coverage that time on the play. Yeah, nice coverage that time by Mark Seavers after getting burnt the last time. He was right with him, not giving up that other big play. So now hopefully BV can hold him, get the ball back, and uh, work with the clock here. Third down and 10. We got Shannon and uh, Matthew Butcher, other wide receivers here. And there's a pump fake. Almost picked off. Oh, and then he catches it after the tip. Oh, what is that? That's a break for Warburg on that play. That That's is a, a break for break. Warburg, Scott. <laughs> Nick Grant tipping it up in the air. And they're still able to get it. What's nice concentration by, uh, I believe that was Chris Shannon for Robert Bird. That was really nice concentration look, on look his part. Look what party. happens here, Rhea, on this one. We got, there's a nice pump fake, and that draws the cameraman. Out. And then right there, you see Jason Fick, excuse me, tipping the ball up in the air. And Good presence of mind for Shannon, though, to stick with the ball. That's a sign of a great receiver. Back to live action. Brian Nelson, we should add, got drilled by Matt Sauer and Jason or uh, Jason Giesel, excuse me, on that play. Look at all the fans enjoying penalty today's on the, action. Penalty on the, the Beaver is now getting carted around the stadium. <laughs> I look over to the other side of the field. There's a lot of tailgating going on, looks like as well. The B, you got the BV Club out there. And we got a penalty here now on this play. It's going to be a dead ball foul. Looks like it's going to go against BV. We got the super fans going crazy. <laughs> you gotta love it. That's what homecoming's all about. Yep. Here's a handoff to Shannon. He gets to the right sideline on first down. Uh, just a little hint to Eric Dowling. Uh, he should put his shirt on. He's not a very attractive man. <laughs> he is my friend, but I will tell Eric Dowling too he should have his shirt on. Uh, go down in the BB defense. Mike Malali leads the leads in tackles with 10, and Nick Grant has eight. Eric Moore seven, and Matt Sauer six. Makes the stats, guys, for that. Here's a three-step drop. It's a lob pass, and no, they, that one had no chance. I don't think you're going to be able to throw that lob pass on a day like today, unless you give the receiver plenty of time to run under, underneath it. I mean that Hartle was pretty well covered on that one too. Oh, and on that one, the intended receiver, Derek Cardell, he's had a big game today. He's really hurt the Beavers with 135 yards. Of course, most of that came on that big touchdown play, that 60-yard touchdown pass. It was a quick drop. Excellent coverage on that play. Yeah, nice coverage that time again by Brian Schmidt once again. It was all over. Schmidt's been having an excellent game. He's come out to play here in the third, second half. Yeah, he has really turned it on, and uh, that's what they needed out of that secondary. Here you see it. Warper's going nice for throw, uh, Brian Schmidt. Stop it, Ryan Rowe back there trying to get the interception. They're going Fourth for it. Fourth down and two, this is a huge play. The crowd's on speed. Big play here for BB defense. Nelson's going to keep it, and I think he got it. Oh, but he's hammered on the end of that one. I'll tell you what, Eric Moore Eric got a Moore piece of him. Clotheslined in there. Take him down. 
but he picked up the the first down. That's what you don't want to see. They're really getting down there. As here's the replay once again, uh, just squeaking through. There's Brian Nelson. Then Look at that Eric hit. Moore comes up with the clothesline. That hit. I'm gonna see that hit in your show tomorrow. Handoff goes to Shannon. He's got some running room, but throws as quickly. Credit Eric Moore again with that stop. Eric Moore's done a good job today also, uh, coming up from his safety position, getting some big hits and uh, getting some big plays. The clock's ticking. 12 minutes, 50 seconds to go here in the game. Warburg is up by two, and, and they're knocking on the door once again. The second down and five here in the BB red zone. Nelson barks out the signals. Handoff to Shannon is going to go inside the 10. Let's see if PV can't get another stop here in the red zone. Eric, they've done a great job so far. Yeah, they have. Uh, in the first half, we saw three times Warburg was down this close and BV was able to stop him. So they just have to come up with another big play, get some uh, intensity going on that defensive side of the ball, and uh, got to get something stopped here. First and goal from the five yard line. And the BB's got, looks like a seven man front now. Two linebackers. And is Nelson gonna That's get That's in the yep. touchdown. Nelson, Nelson taking himself, Scott. Ran the option. Good play call for Orberg. Yeah, it was. Real nice play call for Orberg. They've been able to, Nelson has been able to run on the BV defense all day. They really haven't been able to stop him in the, he's a quick, Quick uh, runner and his quick feet and able to slide in there for the touchdown. So now BV is down by eight points, 13 to 21, depending on this uh, kick. Right now for uh, quarterback Brian Nelson, he's got five carries on the ground for 52 yards. So uh, it's an average of 10 yards per carry. They're gonna go for two here, Nelson. And it stopped. Stopped. Great job. Who was that on that? That was Giesel. Jason Giesel getting around from his uh, defensive end position to trip up Nelson. So, so we'll see it again. Schmidt has a chance. There's the touchdown. Just sliding in there is Brian Nelson. Nice looking play. Choreographed there by Warburg. So Warper goes up 21-13, an eight-point lead here. Uh, eight-point lead, and BB's got to work against the wind here, too, in the fourth quarter, so they have two things working against them. The, the clock isn't really a factor yet, but... Plenty of time left in the game, Scott. 12 minutes left in this quarter. I just have a feeling BB's going to come up with some big plays here in the second half still. I know, I don't know, Coach Hatchek is still going to reach into his bag of tricks here, but we can... As you see, uh, Craig walk. Williams going out. They have a they have a little kickoff thing called the Circle of Death. We, we could see... Uh, or the Globe of Death, excuse me. Globe and, of uh, Death. We could see a real interesting, interesting kickoff here. I don't know. Hatchek just kind of warned us that if we saw Craig in there... Uh, Something might be up the sleeve, as you see there, Coach John Ward. Win the game. Tell me this, guys. Win the game. That's all they want. And they're the key. The defense is the key to this game. I mean, actually played game on both sides of the ball, offense, defense for both teams. Uh, couldn't ask for much, much, much more in a football game. Let's see. This kickoff, too, it, it might be we might not have a chance to run that globe of death because it might go out of the back of the end zone depending on the kick here. Should be a pretty good kick. And uh, that's going to be the case. I think they were going to, it looked like they were going to do it. Yep. The wind's just too strong. I don't think you're going to, I don't think they're going to have a chance to do it now. Uh, unless Warburg has a really poor kickoff. We'll see it again though, I'm sure. If we don't have a chance this game. So 
Bro Preview's gonna start off at their 20 now. Trying to go 80 yards. We've got Todd Tryon here split to our near side along with Craig Williams on the other side. And Hissler gets the call up the middle. Sneaks through there is Chad Hissler. Still on his feet, but finally brought down. Nice little five yard run for Chad Hissler. Chad Hissler, 22 carries and 49 yards. Warper doing a pretty good job in, in containing him. Yeah, Chad's averaging 164 yards yeah, per game. He comes in the third leading rush on the yep. conference, so that's going to. So he's quite below his him. average, but give credit to Wartburg. Moo just throwing a little behind Matt Moore there. BV likes to go with those uh, quick three step drop back passes, uh, trying to hit the wide receiver on the little slant pattern. Jeremy Bile's extremely effective at that. Now they're trying, Klinkovic is trying to have that same. Success. I like what their coaching staff is doing though. They're, they're sticking with the freshmen even. It's, they're giving them a lot of confidence here. Set third down and five. Big play for BV. They need to, to keep the ball out of Warburg's offense. And this Matt Pelusi big hole, Scott. Matt Pelusi, this kid's a good player. Yeah, yeah a good fullback out of Linmar. Rarely gets in. But when he does, he makes, I mean, he lets you know that he's in the game. He makes something happen. Yep. So Matt, Matt's uh, career here at BV has been plagued by injuries, but he's been able to stay somewhat healthy this year, getting a little playing time. And uh, although it's, it's hard to get too much playing time when you got a good uh, fullback like Tony Lovejoy ahead of you on the depth chart. But uh, hey, next year, it's Matt's uh, time to carry the ball at fullback, and I'm sure he'll do a heck of a job. And the injured player for Warburg would be number 44, Keith Schmidt. He's a sophomore linebacker down on the field right now. And uh, so we'll hope he's okay, and that gives us a chance to say that today's broadcast of the BV Warburg football game is sponsored by Silkscreen Inc. And I want you to stop down, go see the friendly people at Silkscreen Inc. for all of your screen printing needs. Now, today's broadcast is also sponsored by Subway. Subway offers six sandwich choices that are 97% fat free and under 350 calories. All of their sandwiches are made with freshly baked bread and fresh meats and vegetables. Subway custom makes your sandwiches to your satisfaction at Subway. Get it your way right away. And that's sure really haven't been able to figure out what's uh, quite wrong with uh, Keith Schmidt here. Looks like it might be something. With, oh, he's been able to get up on his own. Maybe just had his head kind of running a little. This, this might give us a chance uh, to talk about the cross country team. With Brent interviewed. Uh, I believe it was Oscar and, and Heather Hendrickson. That wasn't yep. uh, a few moments ago, and they returned from their meets that was held at Mount Marty this afternoon. And boy, yeah, if it was, luck as, to if them, it was huh? as windy, if it was as windy yeah. Mount Marty as it is here. Yep. Hope, hope those guys are running with the wind yeah. instead of against it. That'd be. It'd be tough going up some of those hills. Click of his hands off to Hissler. Hissler is, goes to the far sidelines and picks up a game of about three or four. Chad right there really trying to hit that outside corner, just couldn't quite turn it fast enough. See if the Beavers got second down and seven. The clock is at 10 minutes, 25 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Klinkenfest back with about a five-step drop, throwing and looking is intercepted, picked off by number 37 for the Knights. That was Lance Thompson, the senior middle linebacker who uh, Coach Hatchek said you had to be careful of. Intended receiver on the play was Todd Tryon. Is 
there you see it. Trying to get it to Ryan Grubb right there. Lance Thompson just able to sneak in there. Get the interception. As the cheerleaders trying to get this crowd pumped up. You can see it go a long way if the BB defense can make a big stop here on this drive for Warburg. Warburg starting off the ball again. Warburg might try to use a little bit of clock here, you think, with 10 minutes to go in the game. Be sure to watch live broadcasts of the Storm Lake City Council meetings on Innovation Video on the first and third Mondays of the month. The council meetings begin at 4 p.m. And you'll see them only on Innovation Video, Cable Channel 3. There's Nelson, he finds his fullback out of the back. Tim field. Morrison right there. We haven't called Morrison's number since the first quarter. Another big third down play now coming up, Scott. Hopefully BB can get the ball back with a little under 10 minutes to go here and get something started. He's going up that 4-3 defense. to see if they put on the blitz here or not. And they're going to hand it right up the middle to Shannon. Trevor Shannon gets the first down. Trevor Shannon has really nice balance in his running. Like right there, he got hit a couple times, able to maintain that balance and uh, keep on his feet and he's get not. about four more yards. The thing that amazes me about Shannon is he's not really that, he's not the quickest running back I've seen. I've seen a lot quicker running backs in the Iowa Conference, and he's not really the biggest. He's not, he's just all around, all around, well rounded running back. Here's Nelson back to pass, and he's got to get rid of it. Oh, he completely. Nice the catch by the tight end, Steve Carr, Scott. Could throw it up about 10 feet in the air and Steve Carr would be able to pull it down. Steve Carr's 6'6", 244, out of Manchester, Iowa. It's a nice job to Steve Carr. I'll tell you what, Steve Maxey was putting the hurt on, on Nelson that time. Give him another split second, Steve Maxey would have had that sack, but somehow Nelson was able to get rid of it and connect it to Carr. I don't know how, but that was just amazing play for Warburg that time. So Warburg knocking, knocking on the uh, end zone door again. Handoff goes to Shannon. He's got gonna go nowhere though on the sidelines. Trevor Shannon, we probably should mention, is only a sophomore out of Fairbank, Iowa. Fairbanks, Iowa. We're in the eastern part of the state. Well, BB has got, they have got to keep Warburg out of the end zone here. You're down eight with 8-10 to go. I don't think BB could come back in 15 down here. They would need three scores. And the fake handoff. Jason Fix out there, incomplete. Yeah. Good pressure by Fick. Yeah, real nice job by Jason Fick. Uh, reading the linebacker, or reading, the, excuse me, the quarterback and able to get in there and put pressure on him and made him throw that ball away, throw it into the ground. So now another third down play coming up for uh, BV, or excuse me, Warburg. Warburg's done a great job of moving the ball most of the day. But they've only been able to get 21 points on the board because BB's been able to stop them when they got down in the red zone. We'll see the pass is incomplete. Excellent coverage there. Steve Maxey broke it up. Brings up fourth down. We'll see. I think they're going to bring on the field goal unit. So This is better than anything. Look at those goal posts. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Those goal the goal posts are, are just rattling. I think they're good. <laughs> you get a shot of those goal posts up there. That, that's, that I, might just I, show I, you the velocity of this wind. If we win this game, I don't the flag straight towards the forum. 
if we win this game, I don't think it's going to take many students to bring the goalposts down. They might just come down by themselves. <laughs> if uh, we could zoom up there and get a shot of that for the home folks there. The goalposts are just a rattling. Well, we have it. BB calls timeout. They want to talk over their defensive strategy. So tune in. Why don't you tune in to Innovation Cinema every night, and that's on cable channel 13 from 7 p.m. to 11 for all your great movies ranging there, from finally. classics to new releases. Movies showing in October include Jaws, Days and Confused, The Little Rascals, Bodyguard, Terminal Velocity, and 2 Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. As he had the shot of the goalpost there, you saw the, the wind is whipping stuff up here at uh, Jay Leslie Rollins Stadium, Scott. Uh, this is this, the lake has a lot of white caps. That's right. We're situated. Looking. We're situated just to the north of Storm Lake, and I, you can, there's a lot of white caps in the lake. It looks like in the this this stadium. It's almost like Cyclone Stadium names are comparable to that. Where uh, on windy days you just have to deal with the wind. This is a big play here for, looks like Woodford is going to go for the two-point conversion here. Excuse me, fourth down, they're going to go for the touchdown. They have him wrapped up. He's throwing it out of the end zone. BV holds, Scott. We take over, but we've got some 55 to work with. We need you know, Woodford, Woodford might want to rethink that. I mean, a field goal makes BV have to get two touchdowns in exactly. seven minutes. Now BV only has to get a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie the game up. Warbrick has missed two field goals, but those were against the win and not with the win. I, if I was a field goal kicker, I'd be uh, talking to my coach right now. Warbrick has a first-year coach doing a pretty good job. Steve Hagen, their new head coach. Yeah, he's, he's one of the uh, about the three new head coaches. Had, right. Coach Hatchek's another one. Luther, who we've, of, we've already defeated once this year. Uh, they have the other new head coach. It's been a changing of the guard in yep. the Iowa Conference. So. Been a handoff to Lovejoy, doesn't really go anywhere. As you can hear the wind coming through my uh, microphone, I think. I can hear it in my headset. Second down and six here. Let's see what the Beavers can get going. Klinkopis is handing off to Hissler. Hissler just hasn't been able to break yeah. that big game. Warburg, Warburg's, or, totally stuffed, Warburg's totally stuffed the running game today. Those three linebackers, uh, Lance Thompson in the middle, and uh, number 90, 91, TJ Heather, the freshman, uh, they They've just bottled everything with the running game up, especially the second half. Uh, right now, BV, uh, they've got to go the air, I think, Scott. Uh, nothing else seemed to be working. But again, that, that's, we don't have that luxury. We're against the win in the fourth quarter. Maybe not able to sort of the long ball real well anyway. But here's Klinkfist. He's going to throw it. Might be just short of the first down, probably about a yard, it looks like, two yards. Ryan Grubb was able to get it, though. So now here's a big gamble. What you do down here? Uh, six, six twenty left in the game. Fourth, fourth and one. Boy, it's they're putting in the punting, punting unit. Okay, they're putting in a punting unit, but are they gonna actually punt it? We've seen fake punts before. I don't know. This, this is situation. A I wouldn't mess around. If I was yep. gonna go for it, I'd put in the regular unit. I think it's gonna be a punt. I'm sure it will be. It is. Hogriff gets it away. Ooh, not real good. The wind. The wind just killed that. You get it up into that strong uh, north wind, Scott, and it's falling down. So I guess Warburg not much is, doing. So the pressure goes right back on the heels of the BB defense. They seems they, like every time they go on defense, they, they got to keep yep. Warburg out of the end zone and getting the ball at the 39-yard line. What more can you ask for? But, you know, this defense, I mean, they've been put in this position enough today and enough in other games that uh, they know what they're doing. A lot of upperclassmen on this defense, a lot of uh, 
three-year starters, two-year starters. So uh, I'm not too worried. And, you know, they've stopped him today, and I think you know just have to win one more stop to put in their. Uh, a big play. It'd be nice if we could have. We had two interceptions already. It'd be nice if we come up with a fumble recovery or anything like that. It goes to the fullback. Tim Morrison, big kid. He's a he's only a sophomore, also 6'2", 235 from Montezuma. A lot of young players on this Warbird team. They're going to be a team that once again to be reckoned with in the future. There's so you a, see the replay. Wow, he just dragged. Yeah, Brian Schmidt. Strength. Schmidt was. Clock still running now, becoming one of this enemy kind of with 5:15 to go in the game. Be sure to stay tuned if you have a post-game wrap-up after the game. Try to interview a couple players, maybe. And oh, there's a touchdown. That could be the nail in the coffin, Scott. That did it right there. Quick. Derek Hartle. Derek Hartle. If I had to say the key player to the game right now, I would uh, say he's probably it. That's the second touchdown catch. He's got it. That's, what, almost 200 yards. 175 yards. Here's Thanks. the re here's Brent the replay on that. that. Nice nice throw by uh, by Nelson it, there. Look like quick a quick throw. Got it that? in there. No one no looked one like was a, back there for like a safety. Like the quarterback slipped maybe even on that play. Derek Hartle. Everybody's we focused on on uh, Chris Shannon throughout the game, but really they've kind of contained him. But Hartle's just killed the Beavers. 175 yards, two touchdowns. Here's the extra point. And that's going to be right through the middle. So Warburg has blown this game open 28 to 13 with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Now BV's got to get two quick scores here as uh, some of the Beaver faithful start uh, filing out here. Maybe, I don't know if BB's going to try their kickoff here or not. So now it's going to have to be a combination of two scores plus a couple two-point conversions is what we're looking at now with five minutes to go working against the wind. It's going to be a tall order, but stranger things have happened. Well, mind you, today's broadcast is copyrighted by Innovation Video and Buena Vista University. Any rebroadcast of this telecast without the expressed written consent of Buena Vista University and Innovation Video is strictly prohibited. Look at the BB sidelines. Kick is going to be deep once again, taken by Jeff Brennan, and there's a circle of death. Let's look at it here. Oh, but Warburg covered it well. Didn't fool Warburg at all. Fooled me. I didn't know who had the ball. It, it fooled me too. <laughs> I think it fooled everybody else. I saw stand. Ryan Grubb look like he had it. Brennan looked like he still had it, but it was Craig Williams who held on, and uh, Warburg snuffed it out. Well, let's take a look at this. Here you see. The Coach circle of death, he's getting a circle and then uh, hand it off to someone. And the idea is no one's supposed to know who has it. And there you see Craig Williams getting ta getting tackled there. It's a good idea, though. Coach said he would might might use it. He yep. Did. They pra they practiced that a couple days of practice. He said they try to put in, try to get something going. Just through the hands of Matt Moore. Todd or no, Todd Trying, trying excuse me. I think we got to go to the air, though. With four, we have, Our running game hasn't really been successful. Coach said Chad Hissler might break a couple 50-yard runs. That hasn't been the case thus far. Hissler having to give credit to the Warburg defense, though, that those linebackers are just coming up and stuffing everything.
They're still trying with the run though, Scott. There's Lovejoy once again. Trying to get something and anything going. BV's offense is cut stalled right here in the fourth quarter. Last week, last week they put up 47 points on the board, but today just not able to get things going. We got three receivers, Tryon, Grubb, and Williams. And quick just fires. Once again there, Lance Thompson in the middle breaking it up. Rob Klinkfuss, he was just, he was really on a roll there and start off the second quarter and then into the third quarter, but right now it just seems like it uh, doesn't have as good a rhythm as, as he did earlier. So it'll be fourth and seven. They gotta go for it. Big gamble once again, being down deep in our territory. Four down seven, this is it right here. This is pretty much the game if BB doesn't get it. Klinkenfest needs to find something, he runs it and- He I, might, he might have come, got it. I think he might have gotten it. Give him credit, nice run there. Yeah, no one to No, nope, they're saying he's short. Must be just barely short then. As you can see, there's the score. It's a situation, we got four minutes to go here in the game. Warburg's gonna take over on downs. Yeah, so the situation doesn't look very good here for the Beaver faithful at J. Leslie Rollins Stadium. We got an excellent crowd on hand though. Everybody's sticking around. Looks like uh, Warburg probably trying to use some clock now, but uh, BB defense not going to have any of it. Imagine BB might try to use some of the remaining timeouts so they can get the ball back with more time left. That was John Kelly, junior running back out of Jessup, running that one. Thank Subway today for the free Subway sandwiches that we got. Thanks a lot. They're one of our sponsors. Also, Silk Screen Inc. For making this broadcast possible. New quarterback in the game, too. That's Aaron uh, Stensland. Aaron Stensland, again, another Iowa Falls native. Yep. Aaron Stensland, the sophomore, I believe. Sophomore quarterback, also excellent point guard for Iowa Falls in his high school days. Let me tell you something, that kid could light it up from three point range <laughs> like none other. <laughs> 317 to go on the scoreboard, 28 to 13, the Warburg Knights leading BV. And really that's not indicative of the the score is not really indicative of the no. way this game is played, I don't think. But it's been a case of the, the big plays has hurt BV. We knew it would be a game of big plays. It's so what we said in the intro to start things off. But the majority of the big plays have gone toward Warburg's favor. Those two long passes to Hartle, I think, really really broke BV's back. I think the, the key play in the first half, too, was that, was that pass to uh, Shannon in the corner of the end zone. That, PV really yep. had the momentum there, and then, and uh, that I think really took some of the momentum away. That one's gonna be picked off. That's Brennan. Jeff Brennan, a freshman defensive back, picks that one off. So BV's offense take over. Down by two scores. Does a nice job. Uh, quarterback Stensland just let that ball float in the air there, as we'll see. And uh, Brennan just got under it and just came right to him. Thanks. Merry Christmas. I'll take yeah. it, says Brennan.
That's the third interception that BB's had today. Just quick pass to Ryan Grubb. So this game, the, the final score won't be much different than what we've seen in the series so far. We mentioned the average score since around 1988. It's been 30 to 10. Right now we're at 28 to 13, but certainly this the Beavers have played a lot better than what the score indicates, I think, this game. They've had the chances to make the big plays. In the first half, I would try a little bit some trickery. Almost worked, not quite, on that fake punt and that reverse, big reverse pass. I think if, if those things would have happened, Eric, uh, it might be a different story right now. Yep. Just, uh, that's the way, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Uh, just things just did not fall BV's way today. You have to give these guys credit though, uh, coming in. Major underdogs coming into this season that coming into this game. A lot of people just thought the upset was going to happen. Fell a little short, but uh, they still got to be proud and happy with their performance. A little swing pass out to Hessel. And we are at 1.36 to go in the game. Be sure to stay tuned. Uh, we'll try to have an interview with a player or a coach. And as we mentioned earlier, the Iowa Hawkeyes coming up with a big win today over at Happy Valley at Penn State, 21 to 20. That's going to bolster their national rankings. So it's good for the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones as well. They're having their way over in Stillwater, Oklahoma. They were up 17 to nothing over Oklahoma State that last check. And again, there's a big game going on in Indianola between Central and Simpson, and Simpson was up 20 to six over Central. And that game had big implications in the conference as well. The two leaders at 4-0. And we'll be seeing both of those teams. Actually, we'll only be seeing Central. But uh, BB's got a tough schedule coming up, Eric. Yeah, they do. They next got week, the big three. Next week, they travel to Fayette. 